Zendrius on YouTube. See, I've learned that there are falsehoods and lies, and there are anti-truths. And an anti-truth is something that's so preposterous that you couldn't, you couldn't make a claim that's more opposite to the truth. You know, one year later, Kyiv stands, and Ukraine stands, democracy stands. Whatever you think of the war in Ukraine, it is pretty clear that Zelensky has no interest in freedom and democracy. In fact, Zelensky is far closer to Lenin than to George Washington. They have said, hey, Ukraine is a thriving democracy, and Zelensky is this hero that is protecting this democracy, which is why Biden says we'll do everything within our power to support him. And oh, by the way, we're going to send uh, almost a uh, hundred billion of American taxpayer dollars to go and support this defense of democracy. But when you actually look at what Zelensky's democracy yeah. is, you see uh, no freedom of the press. He has shut down any media that he does not control, his government does not control. He has gotten political opposition uh, arrested, made sure that that's happened. As you mentioned, he shut down the biggest Ukraine church uh, in the country. And, and I found this quote today. He has actually threatened to punish, quote, any Christian caught worshiping in unapproved ways. Oh, so on. this is the democracy that they are saying, well, we need all of your money, our money, taxpayer dollars to go and defend. This is their shining example of democracy. It's no surprise then when we look at what's happening here at home, Tucker, and it's no surprise how we see the political and power elite so easily and willing to undermine our own democracy, undermine our own freedoms, abusing their power to achieve their own political interests because they look to Zelensky's democracy and they see a reflection and an opportunity for themselves. He is a dictator. He is a dangerous authoritarian who has used a hundred billion in U.S. tax dollars to erect a one-party police state in Ukraine. And that's not an overstatement. Over the past year, Zelensky has banned opposition parties. He shut down critical media by force. He's arrested his political opponents. He has sent soldiers into churches. Zelensky's secret police have raided monasteries across Ukraine, even a convent full of nuns, and arrested dozens of priests for no justifiable reason whatsoever and in clear violation of the Ukrainian constitution, which no longer matters. And in the face of this, the Biden administration has said nothing, not one word. Instead, they just continued to push to send Zelensky more tax dollars. So naturally, Zelensky has become much bolder. Why wouldn't he? The most corrupt government in Europe is a country by the name of Ukraine. Now, you may have heard of this country, Ukraine. It is the most corrupt government in Europe. Uh, the Guardian did a deep dive on Ukraine's corruption. In fact, right now, you can go to the U.S. State Department's website and you can see how they document Ukraine's corruption as late as the year 2021. In fact, the United States State Department discourages and even warns U.S. businesses from doing business in Ukraine due to widespread corruption and a government that is anti-democratic. You know, lock up, lock up opposition, lock up journalists, make them disappear. This is on the State Department's website. It has been for years, actually. The U.S. State Department in 2021 detailed how the Ukrainian government has a history of making people disappear at the hand of their secret police. So we were shocked. We were shocked to learn overnight that there was gambling going on inside this establishment, that the corruption in Ukraine is even worse than ever. The Ukrainian government confirmed the resignation of multiple high-ranking Ukrainian officials caught in a massive corruption scheme. This is being called the largest mass resignation and corruption scandal since the Russian invasion began. So far, over a dozen high-ranking Ukrainian officials have quit their posts after it was revealed that they were stealing U.S. aid money. The official narrative on this, this whole war, it's just like it makes no sense. And again, like I said, remember, the same people who are pushing this are the ones who are telling you Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and stuff. The word they use over and over and over again, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton, all of them unprovoked. Vladimir Putin led an unprovoked war in Ukraine. But to say he was unprovoked is like insane. It's just only people who know nothing about the history of this conflict would say there was no provocation. Zelensky ran on peace. He brought on bringing the country back together, right? The Russian speakers in the East, the Donbass, 
but he didn't do it. So why? Because he got threatened by NATO and the ultra right in uh, Ukraine. And so they'll, they threaten to kill. He knows he's a dead man if he get, does a peace deal with uh, Russia. So that's why he won't. And when they had a peace deal in March, and uh, that's when Boris Johnson from the UK flew there and said, hey, you better, you don't do this. And he, he killed the peace deal. So Russia is the one that wants peace in this deal, and Ukraine and NATO do not. They want to bleed Russia economically, and that's why they blew up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. There was a peace agreement in 2014. The CIA helped overthrow the Ukraine government, and and then uh, the people in the Donbass didn't want to go along with this coup government, right? Because the leader of Ukraine wanted to be friendly or economically with Russia instead of join like the European Union. And that they couldn't have that, right? So that's why they did a coup. And the people, the Russian speakers in the Donbass didn't want to go along with that coup. And so they kind of wanted to break away. Ukraine government started shelling the Donbass. And so they had a peace agreement called the Minsk Agreement. And that was supposed to give them independence. They were supposed to have their own elections and they were going to stop shelling them. They never did. They ended up killing like 14 or 15,000 people in the Donbass over the last eight years. And now it's been revealed that that peace agreement was never real. The uh, uh, Merkel, the uh, former uh, prime minister of Germany, just admitted that the only reason they did that peace agreement was to give Ukraine enough time to build up its military. So when they finally did provoke an invasion, which is what they did, that they would have a military ready to fight uh, Russia. And so people don't know this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And so they just think that one day Putin woke up and said, I want to go invade Ukraine because I'm a maniac. And they think that he's the bad guy. They think that he's a, he's acting rationally. He's acting. We always knew he would do this. In fact, we were counting on him doing this. That's why we did what we did. And they don't know that Ukraine ramped up their bombing right before the war started last year. They like, doubled their bombing. They were really trying to provoke it. And they did. And they got mm -hmm. They provoked it. And the Russia would rather have a peace agreement. Uh, at the rest of the world would rather have a peace agreement. Not NATO, not Joe Biden, not the military-industrial complex. And so that's where we are. The United States are the world's terrorists. 